Okay, welcome back. So now let's look at some examples of applying the ideas of the Poisson distribution. Okay, so here's our question. We've observed over four nights, 20 deer crossing a road at a certain point. Okay, so over four nights, 20 deer, what does that mean? That means five deer per night. All right, so the first question, type of question we might want to answer here, what's the probability two deer would cross on a given night? Now, we expect five, but it's possible that we only got two one night. Okay, so we expect five, but plugging into our formula, the probability of seeing two is 8%. All right, it's low we expected five but it's possible to get two maybe about eight percent of the time all right so plugging into the formula not bad I would argue it's even a little bit easier than the binomial formula but of course we also want to know how to use technology here to check ourselves so let's look over in Excel all right so we have built-in function plus on dist all right so we wanted remember we wanted the probability x equal to 2 and only 2 so 2 our mean was 5 and we don't want a cumulative probability here right we want only our PMF value okay so that should give us that 8 percent that we found a minute ago let's continue with this example but ask a different problem what's the probability that less than 3 deer would cross on a given night. All right, so we know our, our mean is still the same here. Our mean is five. So again, less than three means zero, one, two. So in a situation like this, we'd find ourselves plugging into the PMF multiple times. Now in the last example, it didn't ask for a cumulative probability, right? This, this is a cumulative probability. Okay, so usually for cumulative probabilities, this is where we really want to want to rely on technology, right? I don't, I don't really want to have to plug into that formula multiple times. Okay, so let's look at things over in Excel. So I'm still going to use this Poisson dist function. All right, but remember we wanted fewer than three. Fewer than three is the same as saying less than or equal to two when we're dealing with the discrete random variable. All right, so that's two. Our mean is still five, but this time we do want a cumulative probability. All right, and that should give us the same thing as if we were to actually plug into our formula and three, three iterations of that and sum those up. All right, so Excel agrees with what we got. Now, when we have cumulative probabilities, these are also a little more kind of visual things. Lots of times with the cumulative probability, it's nice to be able to visualize that. So let's try that in Minitab. All right, so in Minitab, if I go to Graph, Probability Distribution Plot, click OK. All right, here, remember we have a, a long list of a lot of distributions. By default, it'll be on your, your normal distribution, your standard normal distribution. All right, but we here are using Poisson with the parameter or mean equal to five. So it'll pop out our graph, that's what it looks like. Now if I want to shade a specific area, okay, we can double click on that, bring up our options here for shaded area. Remember we wanted um, less than three, which is the same as less than or equal to two. So less than is the left tail, put in two, and now I can visualize this probability that I've been finding. Okay, so we've looked at a cumulative probability. We've looked at a just standalone PMF example. So now let's look at another example here. Okay, so over the last 20 years, we've found an average of four severe rainstorms per year in a certain town. All right, so say we want to find the probability of five next year. We expect four. We want to find the probability of five, simply plug into that formula. That's a simple PMF plug-in. Right? We can use our use Excel function there. All right, one or more. Now here's one interesting thing about the Poisson. So one or more, what does that mean? 
Well, that's, let's write out one or more, probability of x greater than 1. So, what is that? Probability greater than 1, that would mean x equal to, wait a minute, sorry, 1 or more would actually be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, watch out for that. So that would be x equal to 1 probability x equal to 2, equal to 3, and so forth. All right, is there necessarily a cap on greater than or equal to 1? No, this is a Poisson random variable, so theoretically this could go to infinity. Now we only expect, um, we only expect four rainstorms per year, so three would probably have a pretty good probability, four, five, six. All right, but as my numbers started getting bigger, like I, once we get to you know 10 or whatever, that's going to be a pretty low probability. So as we go to infinity, these, these probabilities are going to get really, really small and, and infinitesimal at, at a certain point. But they do exist. They are there. So that we do need to take in, into account those probabilities to infinity. Now by plugging into the formula by hand, this, this would be impossible, right? I couldn't calculate an infinite number of terms for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. Okay, but what I can do, maybe you're thinking, well, let's flip it around and use the complement rule. All right, so that is a super easy way of doing it. And this is one place that the complement rule makes our life a whole lot easier. All right, so one or more rainstorms next year is the same as saying 1 minus the probability of 0. Right, so we've got a 98% chance of one or more rainstorms. We only have about a 2% chance of no rainstorms next year. All right, so I can plug that into Excel. Don't forget my 1 minus. Here's another interesting Poisson problem. All right, what if we want to find the probability no severe rainstorms next month? All right, so we had been saying next year. Now I'm saying next month. So a month is one twelfth of a year. We expect four in a year. So four divided by 12, we expect about one third of a rainstorm per month. Now that doesn't really make sense because of course we can't have a third of a rainstorm, right? But that's how we have to treat this problem. So we're looking for probability x equal to zero with lambda with our mean as one third. All right, so we've got a 72% chance of no rainstorms in the next month. All right, so I can plug that into Excel. No different except what I did there was I adjusted lambda to my interval of in interest. Okay, so, so that's the big thing to demonstrate here. These two are kind of problems specific to the Poisson. We ran into issues there because, number one, the Poisson can go to infinity, so the complement rule is my friend. All right. Also, if we change the interval, like here we change from a year to a month, all right, I have to make sure that I adjust mu accordingly. All right, well, I hope that ties everything together with the Poisson. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.